As it stands now, uh, Westland's water district would in, endorse not voting for the bond in 2012. No, 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 no. I would, I would, you know, there, there's, um, there is no money in this bond for the construction of conveyance facilities in the Delta. In fact, it's the 2009 legislation provides specifically that the water agencies that will receive water through um, conveyance facilities are responsible for paying the costs associated with the design, construction, operation and maintenance of that, of that facility. But there is money in the bond for ecosystem restoration. And then there is money in the bond for storage projects. And there's money in the bond for regional water supply projects. And um, you know, there, the bond has been criticized because it, it, it's bloated. And uh, you know, I'm not going to uh, comment on that. Um, but um, it was a compromise. Yeah. And um, it was a carefully crafted compromise. And so um, I would encourage people to, um, to um, uh, I would encourage members of the legislature not to modify the bond. Um, I cannot encourage you to vote for it, because I'm a public <laughs> official. And uh, we oh, pay this lunch. But uh, <laughs> the, official, the official position of Western Water District <coughs> is to support the bond. You saw a lot of retired ground today, um, and uh, who owns it? Um, what happened to the water that uh, irrigate those lands? Uh, Westland's Water District owns it. Uh, we uh, we bought it at subsidized rates because we issued tax exempt bonds when we, when, we, uh, when we bought it. So I will acknowledge there's a subsidy there. Um, but uh, we, we purchased it uh, from landowners. Um, the reason that we purchased it was because we were attempting to balance, um, better balance our demand for water with supply. And so the water that was originally used to irrigate those lands is now made available to um, other lands in the district. Uh, lands in Westland's Water District do not have water rights. Um, what they have is they have a statutory right <coughs> to a pro rata share of Westland's water supply. And so, um, if we have a million acre feet of water that we're dividing among um, 500,000 acres, they're getting two, two uh, um, acre feet per acre. If we go down to 500 um, acre feet, 500,000 acre feet, it's an acre foot per acre. And so what we decided to do is to increase that acre foot per acre and we would take some of those lands out of production. So today, Westland's owns in the district approximately 100,000 acres of land. The other um, Entity that owns quite a bit of land is retired at the Bureau of Reclamation in 1995 or 96. We entered into a, um, a, a cooperative agreement with, with Reclamation where Reclamation purchased property and we paid a portion of the purchase price so that we could have the water that was historically used to uh, irrigate those lands or the right to do the, the allocation. Um, and so today in Westlands, there are approximately 115,000 acres of land that are owned either by Westlands or the Bureau of Reclamation that have been taken out of, out of uh, irrigated agricultural production. Uh, 40,000 are what I would characterize as retired. They can no longer be irrigated. Theoretically, the, the additional 60,000 acres that Westland owns um, could, could go back into production, although I, I doubt seriously that it ever will. Yes. So if, if somebody um, doesn't take all of their share of water, it's not just a share of the water that they have a right to each year based upon their acreage, they don't choose to take it for, let's say they've got some reason, they've got delta crop or whatever reason, or they're transitioning it. Do they have any ability to help direct where that water could otherwise go, or does all have to go back to the pool if you distribute it out even more? Well, if, 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 if in fact they have applied for an allocation, uh, the application for an allocation has to be has to be associated with irrigable ground. If they, if they file that application, um, they receive, that ground receives an allocation then uh, the, the individual farmer can transfer that to another farmer within 
Lemon District. How many of you have heard about all the transfers of water out of West Lake Water District? Well, well, I read all the time about all the water we transfer out of West Lake Water District. Name one. <laughs> Name a single transfer. We have done exchanges where we get water back, but there is not a single case, not one single case, where Westlands Water District has transferred a drop of water out of this district. Huh. So the next time you read about a transfer, say, think to yourself, I'm going to call Tom Birmingham right. and ask him. Because there is not, I mean, I, I keep reading about how Westlands wants to get all this water back so we can sell it to Metropolitan <laughs> Water District. Why in the world would we go out and spend our share of that $12 billion is going to be about $3 billion. Why would we go out and spend $3 billion to sell water in the Metropolitan Water District when we could just take the district as it exists today and say, buy it. You can have the water today. We want the water so that this land can be farmed. And there has never been, I'll repeat it, there has never been one drop of water transferred out of this district for use by some other agency. Um, Tom, I think the, the Fresno Bee must have, you know, I'm sure you, they must have missed, uh, uh, didn't tell the story right, because there's that one landowner that has been attributed to Westlands, and I've just learned there, he's south of Westlands, uh, Vitovich, who sold his water for $77 million. If you could clarify that for all of us, sure. because I think there's nothing but rumors, and sure. we don't really understand where the water came from and where it's going. Um, yes, the, um, there, there was a lot of publicity about actually two transactions. Yes.